But again, the point of this energy is to, it's to get, it's to remove what's preventing you and other people from being able to live in another level of consciousness. Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor. Today I'm going to share with you an energy update for the new moon and solar eclipse happening on October 14th, 2023. I'm going to go over three, possibly four themes that you might be going through right now. And at the end of the video, I'll share a tip of the week. And this tip of the week for me has been an absolute game changer because I don't know about you, but I was sort of surprised and taken aback by this type of energy. The energy we have now, which is very common for eclipses, it's, uh, it's about being shaken up. It's about shaking loose all of these distortions, all of the unconsciousness, all of the patterns, all of the stuff that we've been going through life, dragging behind us that's been weighing us down, limiting ourselves, limiting our potential, skewing and distorting our perception of reality and also of ourselves, causing us unnecessary pain. And this eclipse starts to get closer and closer and closer and closer and we can feel it. So you might be feeling very sensitive. A lot of you, I would predict very strongly that you're having a lot of, a lot of intense feelings coming up. Some of them probably don't even make any sense to you. It could be ancestral feelings that your great grandma never processed. All of a sudden you're feeling it and you're trying to make sense of it in your life. But, but what I'm trying to say is you might be feeling shaken up a little bit, maybe a little bit in your life, but very much spiritually, emotionally, especially. But again, the point of this energy is to, it's to get, it's to remove what's preventing you and other people from being able to live in another level of consciousness, more in tune, like in a very real way with, with nature, with the interconnectedness of all things. And the most important is love. Underneath the drama whoops, that might be going on in your life and these transformations that don't feel comfortable in the moment, underneath all that is, is like where we're heading. We're heading towards more of ourselves, more of our true essence, and, and just more love. And the world needs love right now. Love transcends everything. It transcends our individual differences, our personality types. It transcends literally everything. It's something that every human being can relate to. It's something every human being is strongly craving right now in their life. And right now this eclipse is coming in and it feels like things are getting worse. Oh my God, what's happening to me? I feel off. But all of it's just being kind of a, it's like a purification essentially that's taking place. With that said, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Let me dive, let me dive now into the three different themes, maybe four, I'm gonna to decide towards the end there. And at the very end, again, I'll give you a tip of the week that'll help you ride this energy. It'll make your life a million times easier. I can guarantee it, this tip of the week. Number one, I wrote down deep healing. Emphasizing, as you might expect, the word deep. So maybe a few days ago, you started to feel a little anxious, maybe a little depressed, maybe you know, just off a little bit emotionally and we just don't feel good, happy, maybe unmotivated, discouraged. And then it's like, because these eclipses have such a great, they do a great job of allowing us to like see inside of ourselves with more, more, deep, more deeply, with more clarity. So I know for me, I found myself kind of investigating for me, what came up over the last few nights or like maybe a week ago starting was worry. I, I woke up every night worried about this or that or random things that I like, I value my sleep. So it's a good way my higher self gets my attention by, <laughs> by disrupting my sleep. But I was like, man, and I, but I was, I was aware, I was aware that I was worrying for no reason, but this caused me, it piqued my curiosity. Where's this worry coming from? Why do I worry so much? And then the deep stuff started coming up. The ancestral stuff for me in particular started coming up. Something my grandfather went through. All of a sudden I was processing sort of in his behalf, unknowingly at the beginning, which can cause people when this ancestral baggage starts to be transmuted through folks like you, which for a lot of you, whether you know it or not, 
it is, which is why you might be having feelings coming up that don't make any sense, that don't seem like they have a place in your life. But our mind is so good at projections. It will project the feeling. It'll find a circumstance that is like the closest fit and your mind will think, I'm feeling this way because of that. But if you really think about it, you'll realize that these emotions are like way over the top. That what's actually happening in your life might not be, might not be as bad as it feels, as dire as it seems, as intense, as big. And therein lies the epiphanies, the insights, and the healing that can take place. And now for me, if, if you're going through this, if you're having feelings coming up that don't make any sense and you're like concerned that it has to do with your external life, one, I invite you again to take a closer look because you might realize your feelings are unwarranted. They don't really make a lot of sense given what's actually taking place. But what I've learned to do with this is not to fight it, just to almost like hold space for myself. There's a, one of my favorite spiritual teachers, his name is Thich Nhat Hanh. You should look him up if you don't know him. He's awesome. He's like this, he's deceased now. He's this beautiful, sweet, loving uh, Buddhist monk, basically. And, he, and, and he's got a million books. Many of his books, they say a lot of the same things. And one of them in particular, he talks about how we can use mindfulness energy to transmute, to heal our pain. Whereas most people, resist the pain. Why am I feeling this way? I have stuff to do. There's a frustration and a resistance to these painful, uncomfortable feelings. But if you can hold space for yourself, as you would care for a child, is the way he would put it. If you can like treat your pain with compassion, if you can hold space and just be present with your pain with uh, patience, acceptance. It's okay. It's okay you're there, pain. It's okay I feel anxious. It's okay I feel afraid. It's okay. I'm here. I'm here. I, the, the greater I am is here. <sighs> you'll find, if you can do that, you'll balance out nicely. And sometimes during this, you'll get some insights. Oh, like for me, I was able to kind of uh, correlate my feelings with grandpa. Um, for you, it may or may not happen. It doesn't matter. You'll know it's working when you feel lighter. And theme number two, spiritual awakening. I know a lot of you have already had a spiritual awakening, but you can have multiple. You can have multiple breakthroughs where you sort of uh, break into a new set point of consciousness, where your consciousness kind of expands and then stays expanded. You become an expanded version of yourself, essentially. Usually what comes before that is this. Deep healing. Deep healing that seems like, like it causes for concern. Like, whoa! Like these feelings that can come up, the, the fear, the grief, the, 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 the rage, whatever it is, it can feel like it could tear your whole life apart. Like your whole life is in great jeopardy because of this sort of state of being you know, influence from their deep, deep, deep past, just taking your body over, influencing your thinking, being again projected into your life. There's, there's pressure. There's, there's, it's, a, it's like a dark night of the soul type of thing. But this is like the pressure most of us need to be shaken fully out of it. It's an experience of, it's a healing crisis essentially, but it's not really a crisis. It's just a healing that most of us don't understand. But if we can just allow it to be on the other side of it is a spiritual awakening, a new level of awareness, a new way of experiencing life on a deeper, richer, more present level, more sensitive to again, all the good things in life that we want, love, happiness, abundance, things of that nature start to be like almost like discovered for the first time, even though they may have been in your life this whole time. So the spiritual awakening also, you might feel drawn to do something. You might feel called to do something uh, like, like that's going to help you with it. And it might not seem related at all. For example, my friend Aaron Dowdy, whenever he's going through this and this at the same time, you know what he, you know what he does? You know what his like... Uh, permission slip, as Bashar calls it, or his rite of passages, it's getting a tattoo. <laughs> That's not spiritual. For him, it is. 
For him, it symbolizes entering a new version of himself. And the process, if you've had, I have tattoos, they're painful. And most, the way to deal with it, you, you learn quickly getting a tattoo is you can't distract yourself. It's, it's a little bit too painful to like pretend it's not happening or to ignore it. The only way to really like sort of cope is to go into it, is to be present and accepting of what is. I'm having a guy drag a needle repeatedly across my arm and it hurts and it burns and it stings and I have five hours left. Okay, I accept. And it can very much be a spiritual experience. And then for Aaron, it's like, okay, I've got this new cool tattoo that is like a, like a badge of honor almost of, of this rite of passage he associates with getting a tattoo. For you, it might not be different. For you, it might be conventional. Maybe you go to a retreat or something. Maybe you, you read a book. Maybe you do some kind of guided meditation. I don't know what it is. For me, I'm going to a rock concert in a couple of days to tattoo a rock band that really represents higher consciousness. That's like my version of that. Most people say, that's dark, that's heavy. Not for me, it's not. For me, I've had multiple awakenings at rock concerts, Tool and Imperfect Circle in particular. Those rock bands, for some reason, move the energy inside of me. Sometimes we'll draw ourselves to something that is greater than us for a concert being a big vibration that can just, that can just sort of do for us what we're unable to do for ourselves. So my point is, allow yourself to go and do what you feel is needed if that's the case. Some of us don't have to do anything. Some of us just need to let our life unfold quite naturally and we'll find ourselves sort of breaking through the deep healing phases. It will, it will like resolve, it will, the energy will move and, and again, give way to a new level of awareness. And number three, opening to love. Love is exactly what people need right now. A lot of us can look around and say, this is not right. The way human beings treat each other, the imbalance of abundance and wealth, the, what we're doing to the planet, what we're allowing to happen to the planet, what we're maybe contributing to doing to the planet with our Amazon purchases and our boxes and our packages and our, the, our, our lifestyle, our big carbon footprint, most of us. And we could fight to change, rearrange all the pieces and think of things to do. But at the end of the day, love causes us to do what's in harmony with the whole, the whole, everything, the plants, the animals, the earth, each other, naturally. It's a no-brainer. It's common sense. But love is this component, and love is where we are heading, my friend. You might not call it love. You might just call it interconnectedness, present. There are different words for this, this like, this very real perspective, you could say, of like the interconnectedness of all things. And it, when you feel it, you act differently. You can truly see other people as other versions of you. The eternal you is in your enemy, is in your boss, in your ex-wife. That's you too. And those, that's just words I'm saying, but going this deep, allowing yourself to go through the discomforts of awakening allows us to access this for real and then exhibit it in our daily life. Watched this awesome movie last night with my kid, um, my, my son Sebastian. He's my youngest one, seven years old. It's called, I think, The Elementals. It's about fire, water, earth, and air. They're like their own entities. They're their own like races in a sense. You know, there's like the fire folks and they're very hot and they can, they have their attributes and, and they don't get along typically with water for obvious reasons. And the air is sort of smug and cocky and doesn't like the other ones. And anyway, there's like this, there's this segregation. There's this weariness of other people, other, other Thing, beings that are different than them, think differently, act differently, look differently. There's this weariness and there's this like uh, resistance they all have with one another. But eventually this little fire woman, this little like young fire girl, she falls in love with this water, per this water being. And at first it's like they're in their mind, they're like, we can't do this. We, we, don't, we don't belong together. You're gonna, me you're gonna put me out, Mr. Water. But eventually they like, they're drawn together through like sort of synchronicity and also love. And they realize they just have this deep love for each other. 
And normally these different elements never touch each other, ever. But they finally, like, this love drew them together. It was so touching. And then when they finally touched hands, they realized the water dude never put out the fire. The fire never burned the, you know, evaporated the water. And there was this beautiful synergy. These two differences coming together to make one really kind of magnificent thing. And that's what a lot of us are going through right in this very moment. Maybe it starts with an awareness of your biases, your prejudices, even when you don't want to admit and feel shameful, you might realize that you are having resistance accepting people that think differently than you, act differently than you, have different choices than you. I know for like the spiritual folks, seeing people like not waking up and sort of like descending into their even more 3D, it's like there's, there's oftentimes there's judgment, there's oftentimes I need to fix them instead of just love and acceptance. And I'm not saying you got to like choose to be more loving. I'm just saying for this week, don't be surprised if you find yourself looking out at the night sky and just feeling this interconnectedness I'm discussing. And then when you feel it, you, you start to like almost examine your choices and the things you would normally do. Like it's happened to me last night. I was sitting outside taking my dog's potty. I looked back at my house and I saw like my cat and my, my wife, you know, walking around and just looking around at the nature and seeing the dog sort of playing. And I just felt like this, it was like a simple, but very like real happiness. And we were going to go inside and watch Yellowstone, which is supposed to be a cool show, by the way. But I felt like I don't even want to do that, man. I just feel so good. I don't need to fill myself with a bunch of content. I just want to be. I just felt so good. And it, it wore off. Me and my wife argued like an hour later. I'm no saint. But the point is, I, I'm aware, and hopefully you are as well, that this is here. This is available. And now, through our own sort of efforts and just uh, awakening and things like that, you, we, I think we're finding ourselves being able to, to sense it, recognize it, access it, and then, and then like be, embody it more and more and more and more. And I believe it starts with us. I believe people that are on this journey, even if you've never spoken a word of it to anybody, by you going through it, by you accessing this love is making it easier for other people. Theme number four, I did not write it down, is putting the pen to the paper. You may have been sitting on ideas and inspiration and things like that. And even though all this is going on, as this deep healing phase kind of gives way to the awakening, which gives way to this connectedness, you might find yourself having a lot of downloads, a lot of ideas, things you could do, create, you know, aspire to become. And what I'm saying is this week's also a good time to like do it, to put the pen to the paper, to take action, to really look at your life and your schedule and ask, how can I fit this in? It may have been an idea for a long time, but now is the time to act. Because from this new level of connectedness, you're gonna find that you can get things done a lot quicker. You may have had, have a, lot, had a lot of resistance in the past. For example, like I work with a lot of people that wanna start a YouTube channel. And there's this like strong knowing, I need to start a YouTube channel. I, I know I meant to. But then it's like there's all this, this has, this goes on for quite a while sometimes before they're actually able to like lock in and start doing it. I predict a lot of you where you maybe have been stuck for a while will be able to put the pen to the paper and start taking this inspired action with a lot less resistance. And finally, my friend's tip of the week, as I mentioned. The tip of the week is this. Nothing is as it seems. As this deep stuff comes up, I can't say it enough, it's so common to initially misinterpret it. It might start off as anxiety, and then as it gets deeper, <gasps> ooh, ooh, again, we project it out there. But what's happening is kind of like this dawning, this gradual dawning of awareness going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So initially, when these big energies kind of present themselves, it's like it can really shake you to the core. As I mentioned, it can really shake you up because of like your mind's conclusion of what it means and what it represents for you. But I invite you to trust. Trust the process. Don't necessarily um, be quick to entertain your mind's perspective, but rather, how do you feel on the inside? For example, I was watching this show. I'm not going to get into the whole story, but anyway, 
I sometimes struggle when the ancestral stuff comes up for me because it's so, it's so concerning. It has to do with like losing my children because my, my grandfather lost his child when he was 10 years old to cystic fibrosis and I just know, I just know he didn't deal with it the way he could have and it's something that's created this sort of paranoia in my parents and in me now and, and when it comes up initially it's like this uneasiness but again as it gets deeper it's like holy cow something horrible is going to happen something horrible is going to happen to my kids and it's just like how, how do i go to bed how do i shake that off so for me i initially i'm just floored by it and i get into like panic mode what do i how, how can i fix this what can i do to, to stop it is like and then it's like this is crazy paranoid thinking but as it gets deeper and deeper i realize there's nothing to even do there's nothing to figure out. It has nothing even to do with me. And all I'm asked to do, or all I can do, is hold space for it and to say, okay, I know these feelings are probably the most uncomfortable feelings I could ever imagine, but I'm here with it. I, I'm, I'm here. And as I hold space for it, it, it changes. My interpretations change. It becomes more obvious that this is not even me. It has nothing to do with my life, your life. It's just these wounds from the deep past are finding a way to resolve themselves through awakening spirits such as yourself. And no one told us. No one said this is going to be, no one warned us this would be happening. So it's like, what the hell? But remember, my friends, nothing is as it seems. Thank you so much for watching, my friend. I wish you an amazing day. Before you go, let me just let you know I have another video I'm going to recommend if this relates with you. It's called The Six Stages of the Spiritual Awakening Process. So if you're, if you're going through this awakening part intensely, and there's a lot of other things that come along with it, other symptoms, other, other bizarre sort of, you know, there's, there's much more to it basically. And if you're finding yourself relating with this, this other video that may not be in this corner, it might be in one of these other corners, it will go a lot deeper into helping you understand your awakening process and the many levels to it. So I'll leave a link there if you want to go further. With that said, I'll see you next week, my friends. Much love to you all. Peace.